Fighting games nowadays are kinda underappreciated. Back in the day, they used to be the popular hot chick at college that everybody wanted to kiss on the mouth. But now it's old and it's got a bad back and a belly from drinking too much Heineken. Throughout the years receiving a cold reception from the gaming world, it hasn't had a chance to evolve or progress its genre boundaries and conventions, much like other shooters and RPGs have over the years. It's kind of robbed us of knowing what other fighting games are possible to play and what other fighting games could be made. But today, I want us to remember one fighting game. Power Stone. Power Stone is a pretty tasty game. It's a fighting game that I honestly think has manifested itself into an Italian chef's kiss. Mwah! Simply beautiful! Much like my last video discussing Jet Set Radio, it's another Dreamcast game that was fantastic when it came out, had an even better sequel, then disappeared into the dark void that is Capcom's IP, never to be seen again. <laughs> However, this isn't your standard 2D perspective fighting game with three rounds to win. It's a lot larger. We're talking 3D arenas, we're talking weapons and items, we're talking interactive maps. We're talking English right now. <laughs> the objective of Power Stone was simple. Fight one-on-one -on -one in a 3D arena space which contains weapons and environmental dangers. There was also three Power Stone gems to collect in which collecting all three turns your character into the ultimate version of themselves to let you inflict big damage on your opponent. What made Power Stone appealing was its simple yet interesting gameplay. It didn't revolve around extensive combo lists, frame data and matchups that if not most fighter games do nowadays. In essence, it was just another arcade style fighter, but with a twist. But that one twist made for exciting gameplay that, to the point that it could be anyone's game depending on what weapons you got and how lucky enough you were to grab those sweet Power Stones and whoop some serious ass. Its sequel, Power Stone 2, was more of the same, but took what worked and amplified it and added in a bunch of new features and a nice, super special feature that I don't see enough of in video games. Number one, its weapons slash items list was expanded by a large amount. There has to be over a hundred weapons to use in that game. <laughs> what is this, Borderlands? Number two, new characters added plus secret ones too. Shh, don't tell anyone it's a secret. Free. Co op play during arcade mode with a four player battle royale, because I know how much you kids love your battle royale. Four. A new adventure mode which was dedicated to collecting money and items to help you unlock new weapons and another new feature which is the item shop which in itself is fairly deep and I could explain in like another video so I will not do that right now. And last but not least, five. And it's special feature that I absolutely love. Dynamic arenas. Oh my. Oh my god. What are dynamic arenas? Dynamic maps or arenas or map illusion or what they call it sometimes is the act of which a level or arena like a multiplayer game it progressively changes and evolves as the game continues to play whether it's landscape changes, weather conditions appearing or certain areas on the map opening up or closing off depending on the condition given. A great example of this would be in the Gears of War series, primarily Gears of War 2. On Gears of War 2, a couple maps did this. There was this one map in particular called Avalanche, which starts off as just a snowy map. There's some cover here and there, some high ground there, some corridor here and there. But after some time has passed on the map, a deadly avalanche just cascades through the map, which can kill you if you don't get out of the way, but also opens up new areas to fight in and quick access to different parts of the map. On Power Stone, every map had this dynamic layout to them, so it felt like you had three mini levels in one big arena. So one moment you're fighting in a tomb with some random traps going off and the next you're running away from a massive rock all while fighting people. Now I know what you're thinking. Astral, Super Smash Bros already does this, it's been doing this, you're too slow, go back to bed grandpa. Yes, Smash Bros does have the items and the stage hazards but where I feel Power Stone is different because of its dimensional perspective. Hear me out. Smash Bros operates on a 2D perspective in a 3D aerial world, much like Street Fighter. So stage hazards are really gonna come from two directions. But with Power Stone, we got an extra dimension to consider, which makes things a little bit more crazy. It adds the random element that you might find in Mario Kart. Another big thing is that there's no combo list or flashy chaining mechanic in this game. It's very shallow in fighting, but honestly, I think it's better that way. Adding an unnecessary amount of depth to a game that is meant to be some mindless fun just because it's a fighting game is a very silly idea in my opinion. 
Which brings me to the point of this video. Power Stone is a perfect example of a fighting game that can still be incredibly fun to play from casual players to hardcore without the need of a combo mechanic or in-depth fighting system. I feel like the reason fighting games don't do well as other popular genres is because of the steep learning curve that comes with even being good at it. Not even just being a professional, just being good at a fighting game. Back in my uni days, I used to play a lot of Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition with my housemate Eric. Shout out to Eric! <laughs> who he himself had some tournament experience and it took me ages to get to a level that I could even challenge a pro gamer at that game. Constant late nights and dozens of hours in training mode with music that drones on for so long that I just want to throw myself down the steps afterwards. Now I'm not saying these games should be scrapped and replaced with super casual baby time weenie hut junior edition. What I'm saying is that we need to make space for games like Power Stone that are fighting games for the let's just have fun crowd. It's not every day I turn my textbooks to Frame Data 101. In conclusion, the Power Stone series is a fighting game genre that's just ready to be tapped into by game developers everywhere. Its lighthearted enjoyment factor has the potential to usher in more of its kind in this generation of gaming. Now, I know gaming development is very expensive nowadays and developers are very scared to make anything that doesn't already have a 5 million follower fan base and isn't geared towards making a killing in esports. But screw all that noise, let's just make a game with no grand statement or mission in mind. Let's just make Power Stone, come on, like, let's just make Power Stone. You know, let's make that a hashtag or something. Let's just make Power Stone hashtag, I think that's too long, but uh, I don't care. Just let's say good no, i just kind of rambling here, but whatever. Also shout out to Beautiful Joe Red Hot Rumble because that is a bad boy game right there and it's kind of like Power Stone, so yeah, make that too. Come on Capcom, wake up, come on, make some games, come on now. But yeah, that's what I gotta say. Astral Black, we out! Peace!